Right then people, welcome back to the channel. It's day six in isolation now from all this crazy coronavirus stuff going on. Um, time to get on with a few bits on the car. So as you know, if it ever happens, big plan this year is to go racing. Um, for road sports, class A that I'm looking to enter, I can only have a maximum of 350 horsepower, there or thereabouts, 300 brake per tonne. But based on 1180 kilos, it gives me about 350, 355 brake to play with. So rather than sticking with the G25 660, which obviously makes that power stupidly easily, I'm going to be swapping to the G25 550. The idea behind the 550, it should spool up probably sort of 600 RPM sooner. Um, slightly better response, but also being a smaller turbo to make that 350 brake figure, it should need slightly more boost and generally torque is in line with boost. So you could run, say, call it 0.7 bar on the, on the 660 to get the 350 brake with a lower torque, or it might take 0.9 or even one bar on the 550 to make the same power with hopefully a bit more torque and bring everything to the left a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I've done a straight swap with this with Rainbird, who's building a two litre stroker. So 660 is going to be absolutely perfect for him. So I'm going to get the 660 off, get the 550 on, and then wait until the end of lockdown before I can go out and tune it. It's going to be, uh, going to be a hard time waiting. So yeah, I'll give you a little closer look. That is the 550. I mean, physically it's identical size-wise to the 660. Exactly the same turbine, same inlet, same outlet, same three inch in, same two inch out on the cold side, all the same fittings, just slightly different compressor. I think the compressor's four mil smaller. It's absolutely tiny, it's like a little KO3 this thing. But yeah, big thanks to Rainbow for doing a swap. So we get the 660 off, we get the splitter off first, drain the coolant out, get the 660 off, get this bolted in. Right, so I need to drain the water. Rad tap is up there, but that is directly above my intercooler pipe. So what I tend to do, get a bit of flexi hose, try, pop it on over the tap, like that. Run that into a bucket, he says. Optimistically, open the tap. Success! That's draining into the bottle. Got to drain the rad because these water fittings are lower than the header tank. So if I don't drain the rad, it will leak everywhere. Remove that and you should hear absolutely loads more draining down now. Gurgle, gurgle. That's filling up nicely. Some is leaking, not sure why. There's a tiny bit leaking actually at the end of the tap. Nothing I can do about that. It's a tiny drop full versus most of it collected. The reason the reason I'm collecting it is because it's a mix of G13 and Mokul coolant additive in there. It's not been in long, as you can see. It's still really clean, really clear, so what I tend to do is filter that and then put it back in. Right, so that's done. I've just got to go under the car, get the P-clip off the oil drain, which gives me more room from above, and then got to lower the car back down to get access, because even though I'm tall, it's a bit of a stretch reaching over down here. So we'll get that done and we'll get the turbo off come under here, all speeding tube-esque, to try and show you this P-clip I've got to get off. It's actually really dark. There's a P-clip here holding this oil drain on. By taking that off, I get a bit more play in it. Right. That is one P-clip removed. Get the car back down off the stands, start getting the engine bay stuff out. Through there. Oh. 
There we go. One, 225, 660. Out. Let's get this cleaned up and ready to get back to Rainbow and uh, get the 550 in. But first, time for some lunch. Right, so that's two turbos on the floor. You can see the difference. If you look at the size of the inlet, much bigger compressor wheel on the 660 versus the 550 is noticeable. But yeah, oh also, that's interesting, much thicker machining on that housing than on the 660. So the actual internal bore is bigger on the 660 than the 550. I hadn't noticed that before. Hmm, right. Get this one cleaned up, ready to go back to Rainbird. Get this one on the car. How did we do this? I think it was that way first. Look how many times you do these things, they're never totally obvious. Great, I dropped the gasket, now I'm cross. In car. Right, top part of the downpipe is now out. As you can see, the heat wrap has fallen apart. Brilliant. This is a hateful job. That'll do. That will do. Right, wheel drain's done. Got some new, new crush washers. And the crush washer's gone under the car. Right, I'm back, had a bit of a strop. Dropped the crush washer, couldn't find it. I know it hit the floor because I heard it. I heard it hit something lower down, so I am confident it's not gone in the manifold. Um, just had a bit of a strop and turned the camera off, really. Right, so the front water line is on. I'll try and get the rear one on now. And then we'll drop the turbo onto the V-band. Get that done up, get the downpipe back in. Might actually be getting somewhere. Sorry, this video is so static as well. All you're getting is this image. Um, do you want to work on? So yeah, that's what it is there, I guess. Right, pretty much there. Just the charge pipe to go, go back on. Back on. Sorry, this is just a view of my elbow, isn't it? All that up. So, what can we say then? Oil lines are done, water lines are done, downpipe's back on, heater pipes are connected. Just gonna pop some water in it, get some water in it, and then uh, turn the key. Give it a bit of a leak check, make sure everything's okay underneath. Then I'll get the inlet on, get the splitter back on, and the car's ready to drive whenever we're allowed to. One more little pre-flight check. So, downpipe's back on, clamp at the top, clamp at the bottom, done. The centre V-band clamp's done up, both bungs, both water fittings, oil is done up, oil drain is on. Inlet's not yet on, turbo is on, it's clocked, all three things been done up. I think that's everything back on. Boost reference is back on. Oil fitting, no, oil fitting doesn't look right. It's gone between the heater lines. Oil fitting has kind of wedged itself between the two heater lines. So I think the easiest thing there is gonna to be to whip the oil feed off quickly. There we go. Yeah, I'm sure that's how the oil feed was before. Right, pre-flight checks I think are done. Let's turn the key, see what happens. I know what I've forgotten. I know. 
That sounds horrendous. Oh, damn it, Nick. EGT probe. EGT probe's hanging out. What a muppet. Oh, I thought I had a serious exhaust leak then. So I'm just going to do that up and then we'll turn the key again. Right. EGT probe's done up now. See if it sounds any better. Right guys, well, it's done. So turbo swap is done, engine's running again, had a good check under, it's all up to temp, there's no leaks in anything. So I think we are there. One G25, 550 on. All I've got left to do is pop the inlet back on, pop the splitter and stuff back on, and uh, yeah, and we're ready to drive. Just a case of uh, whenever the government allow us to. Been doing a couple of other bits lately. I'll uh, I'll finish those off tomorrow and give you a bit of a run through them as well in the next video. But yeah, 550's on. Just need to tune it now when we get it out on the road. It's actually going to be really interesting to see how I'm able to map the 550. Now, what I'd like with a power limit of around 350 brake, I'd like to map it so that it comes up to that 350 as early as possible and holds it flat, which is actually going to mean throwing a load of boost in early and then ramping the boost off to keep the power from rising anymore. So quite different to how I've normally mapped it. I've always tried to map the car to be really linear and progressive because with 500 brake plus, you really need that. But I think when we're in the mid 300s, it's not gonna be quite so important to have it so linear. I think there's gonna be times where I just want as much torque as possible. May even find myself in a higher gear using less revs because of the way it's gonna drop off. But yeah, really looking forward to uh, to mapping it and doing a few different boost profiles. I'm hoping I'll still have a map around 500 brake for track days and a bit of fun. Um, then a fairly sort of linear progressive 300, 350 for the wet. And then obviously like a 350 race map with as much torque as we can get, but keeping it under the, uh, under the power limit. So yeah, really looking forward to it. It should be great fun. If you guys have liked the video, then please like, share and subscribe. And uh, otherwise I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much.